You probably keep a box of baking soda tucked away in your pantry, ready to whip out for baking cookies or freshening up your laundry. Maybe you've used it to soothe an upset stomach or create an erupting volcano for a school science project. Spoiler, when mixed with vinegar, it fizzes and explodes. Baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate, is a household stable. But just how much do you really know about this apparently simple ingredient? Beyond its common uses, baking soda boasts some impressive health benefits, particularly for those dealing with kidney issues. In this video, we'll dive into the science behind baking soda and its potential role in lowering creatinine levels and supporting kidney health. We'll also guide you on the proper way to use it and share insights from reputable studies. By the end, you'll have a clearer understanding of how this everyday item can play a part in your kidney health journey. But remember, while we're here to provide you with valuable information, it's crucial to consult with your healthcare professional for personalized advice. Your health is your most important asset, and professional guidance is key to making the best decisions for your well-being. So stay tuned and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more health tips and information designed to improve your well-being. Let's get started. In our previous videos, we've covered creatinine in detail, so be sure to check those out. But here's a quick rundown. Creatinine is a waste product made by your muscles. When your muscles work, they produce creatinine, which then gets carried to your kidneys through your blood. Your kidneys filter it out and you excrete it in your urine. The more muscle mass and protein you have, the more creatinine you produce. Now let's talk about baking soda, also known as sodium bicarbonate. It's often used to reduce stomach acid because it's an antacid. You can take it as a tablet, mix it with water, or even get it through an IV. Since it's alkaline, it helps balance out the acids in your body. But remember, baking soda is high in sodium. Just half a teaspoon has about 630 milligrams of sodium, which is roughly a quarter of the 2300 milligrams you should aim to stay under daily, according to US guidelines. While baking soda can be helpful for some people with kidney disease, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. The benefits can vary from person to person, and it's important to use it correctly. That's where we come in to help. Studies have shown that sodium bicarbonate, commonly known as baking soda, can help improve kidney function in patients with metabolic acidosis. But what is metabolic acidosis? Well, it's not the same as acid reflux or heartburn. Instead, it's when your blood becomes too acidic. This often happens to people with chronic kidney disease, or CKD, because their kidneys can't remove acid from the body efficiently. Let's dive a little deeper. Metabolic acidosis means there's an imbalance between acid and alkali substances in your blood. Your blood becomes more acidic, and your bicarbonate levels drop. Bicarbonate is a base that helps keep your body's pH level balanced. When you have CKD, your kidneys have a tough time getting rid of the acid, which leads to this condition. Several things can cause metabolic acidosis, such as heart failure, certain medications, or toxins, kidney failure, or diabetic ketoacidosis, which is related to high blood sugar from low insulin levels. It's a common issue in advanced CKD and can mess with your body's protein metabolism. This can even lead to stunted growth in kids and muscle or bone loss in adults. Metabolic acidosis isn't as mysterious as it sounds. It's pretty straightforward to diagnose. Instead of playing detective to find out if you've got too much acid floating around, doctors often look for low levels of base, aka bicarbonate. It's a bit like looking for the missing puzzle piece to figure out what's throwing off the balance in your body's chemistry. Doctors often use a simple blood test to check the bicarbonate levels in your blood, which they call your serum bicarbonate level. This test usually tags along with it a bunch of other tests, 
in what's known as a basic metabolic panel, or BMP, or a comprehensive metabolic panel, CMP. As bicarbonate is the opposite of acidic, it swoops in to save the day when your blood starts leaning too far towards the acidic state. Think of it as the yin to acids yang. It's the base your body needs to keep things balanced. Most of the bicarbonate in your body hangs out in the form of carbon dioxide, CO2, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a leftover from your body doing its thing and turning food into energy. So when doctors measure your bicarbonate levels, they're essentially checking how well your body is keeping the acidity in check. For those with CKD and metabolic acidosis, the kidneys struggle to remove enough acid, causing it to build up and disrupt your body's normal pH balance. Besides high acid levels, people with this condition have low levels of bicarbonate in their blood. Normally, your blood's bicarbonate level should be between 22 and 29 milliequivalents per liter. In metabolic acidosis, these levels drop below 24. That's where sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, comes in. When you take sodium bicarbonate, or NaHCO3, orally, it's like sending in the cavalry to rescue your body's acid-base balance. It works in two clever ways. First, by indirectly swapping out hydrogen ions, H+, for bicarbonate ions, HCO3, in the stomach, and second, by directly absorbing bicarbonate from the gastrointestinal tract, especially when taken in enteric capsules. There are a bunch of theories floating around about why sodium bicarbonate seems to work wonders for CKD patients. One idea is that the acidic environment caused by metabolic acidosis, or the retention of acid in the body, could be doing some serious damage to the kidneys. By alkalizing the body with sodium bicarbonate, it's like hitting the reset button on that acidic environment, potentially preventing kidney injury. But there's more. Turns out your diet could also be playing a sneaky role in kidney health. See, when you chow down on acidic foods, it increases your kidney's acid-producing machinery. This might seem harmless in the short term, but over time, it could lead to inflammation and scarring of the kidneys. Think of it like a slow burn. Those acidic foods might be causing trouble under the surface. Back in 2009, a group of researchers rolled up their sleeves and dove into a study to see if they could slow down the decline in kidney function for people with chronic kidney disease, or CKD. They were on to something fascinating involving sodium bicarbonate and how it might help. They gathered 134 CKD patients who were running low on blood bicarbonate, which is a sign of metabolic acidosis. These weren't just any patients. They had to meet certain criteria like no morbid obesity, cognitive issues, or uncontrolled blood pressure. They excluded those with conditions like chronic sepsis, a condition where the body has a prolonged response to an infection, and congenitive heart failure to keep things focused. Once they had their crew, they split them into two teams. One got sodium bicarbonate supplements, while the other stuck to the standard care routine. But what standard care, you ask? Good question. The researchers didn't spill all the beans on this one, which leaves us wondering what exactly the comparison was. For the next two years, they kept a close eye on everyone, regularly checking their kidney function by measuring something called creatinine clearance. Those who popped the sodium bicarbonate pills ended up with higher blood bicarbonate levels compared to the standard care group. Translation, it seemed like the bicarbonate was doing its job, helping to keep kidney function from dropping too fast. During the study, the control group experienced a decline in creatinine clearance of about 5.93 milliliters per 1.73, with a confidence interval of 4.19 to 7.76 per 1.73. In contrast, the group taking sodium bicarbonate had a much smaller decline of about 1.88 milliliters per
per 1.73, with a confidence interval ranging from negative 0.39 to 4.15 milliliters per 1.73. This means that those on sodium bicarbonate saw their kidney function decline much more slowly compared to the control group. But like any good story, there were some twists and turns. The study mentioned that the standard care group served as the control group, but not a standard control group seeing that they didn't receive a placebo supplement. This is a bit of a plot twist because in a well-designed scientific experiment, a true control group would get the placebo. It's kind of like not having a control group at all, which is pretty important for validating the results. So while the results are intriguing, the researchers aren't popping the champagne just yet. They're calling for more studies, one with all the bells and whistles, like double-blind setups and placebo groups. That's the gold standard in research and could give us a clearer picture of the effect of sodium bicarbonate in kidney disease treatment. Sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda, can be a game changer for individuals with kidney disease. It has been shown to help reduce creatinine levels, making it a useful tool in managing kidney function. However, if your kidneys are healthy and kicking, steer clear of baking soda in your diet. Save it for a spa-worthy foot soak or as a trusty sidekick to unclog that stubborn drain with vinegar. Now let's talk about the side effects. Expect a bit of belching and flatulence. Nothing too dramatic, just your body adjusting to the change. The bottom line is if you have CKD and you're eyeing those sodium bicarbonate pills, make sure it's under the guidance of a healthcare professional. They'll help you navigate the ins and outs, weighing the benefits against potential risks. So before you dive in, talk to your doctor. They'll steer you in the right direction. If you found this info helpful, hit that like and subscribe button. And hey, why not share this video with someone who might need a little kidney saving wisdom? Thanks for tuning in.